With Killers of the Flower Moon, Martin Scorsese has proven once again that he's our greatest living filmmaker. He brings the horrifying saga of the Osage murders to life with captivating visuals, nuanced characterization, and most importantly, meticulous accuracy and attention to the cultural and historical details. There's been a lot of backlash about the film's hefty runtime, but I think it earns that runtime. It definitely feels three and a half hours long, but it doesn't waste a second. It doesn't have the zippy, breakneck pacing of Goodfellas or The Wolf of Wall Street. It has more cerebral and contemplative pacing, like The Irishman, giving you plenty of time to reflect on the atrocities being committed throughout the film. Killers of the Flower Moon is further proof that no one can make a historical epic as thoughtful or compelling or beautifully composed as Scorsese can. Can you find the wolves in this picture? This video will contain full spoilers for Killers of the Flower Moon, but the movie's so long that you'll probably forget about the scenes I've spoiled by the time they roll around. I thought this was America! Huh? Isn't this America? I'm sorry, I thought this was America! Killers of the Flower Moon is a quintessential American story that doesn't shy away from the darkest, ugliest corners of American history. Jingoistic patriots would have you believe that the quintessential American story is that of a self-made millionaire who earned his fortune through sheer ambition and hard work. But the story of a bunch of greedy white people slaughtering native people for their wealth is much more American. It's a microcosm of America's origins. This is how it all started. Whites killing indigenous people and taking what isn't theirs. You told them to do it in the front of the head, and why did you do it in the back of the head? It's so simple. The front is the front, the back is the back. Man, he has to make it look like he done it himself. It just looks like murder. It's not supposed to be that way. Scorsese has dabbled in the themes and conventions of the Western genre before. Taxi Driver is an urban reimagining of The Searchers, and The Irishman is about a notorious gunslinger reckoning with his violent past. But Killers of the Flower Moon is his first full-blown Western. It has all the hallmarks of a traditional Western, gunfights, bank robberies, wide-open American vistas, but it's the opposite of most classic Westerns from the genre's problematic heyday. At their best, Western movies just erase indigenous people from American history. At their worst, they portray Native Americans as savage killers. Native Americans have never gotten a fair shake in this genre, to say the least. In Killers of the Flower Moon, those racist tropes are finally flipped on their head with painstaking historical accuracy. The natives in this movie are a peaceful people whose tranquil community is infested by greedy white killers scheming to usurp their fortune. Shomikasi. That's how you are. I don't know what she said, but it must have been Indian for handsome devil. <laughs> <laughs> Scorsese retreads a lot of familiar thematic ground in Killers of the Flower Moon. It's all about the corrupting power of wealth. Once someone has money, it's never enough. The rich want to get richer, and they have fewer and fewer scruples as their empire grows. We've seen that theme explored in Goodfellas, Casino, The Wolf of Wall Street, The Color of Money, but it feels fresh here because Scorsese ties that corruption and that lust for money to America's original sin. The climactic courtroom scene is almost identical to Goodfellas, with the protagonist reluctantly complying with the prosecutors to save his own ass and pointing out all his partners in crime across a courtroom. But it's just as effective here because the courtroom confession makes for a great dramatic catharsis. After an amoral anti-hero has spent the whole movie doing terrible things, they're forced to admit everything they've done under oath in front of everyone involved. You know, you got you got nice color skin. What color would you say that is? My color. Killers of the Flower Moon is anchored by a trio of fantastic performances. Leonardo DiCaprio as the easily corruptible Ernest Burkhart, a classic Scorsese anti-hero, Robert De Niro as his unscrupulous uncle, William Hale, and Lily Gladstone as Ernest's Native American wife, Molly. DiCaprio's scenes with De Niro are a treat. Seeing how great Scorsese's go-to leading men are on screen together makes you wonder why he didn't pair them up sooner. De Niro does what De Niro does best, playing an evil, reprehensible figure who's really good at putting on a friendly, affable facade around the people he's fucking over. Next year's Oscar for Best Supporting Actor seems to be earmarked for Ryan Gosling, but De Niro could give Ken a run for his money. Gladstone is a wonderfully subtle performer. She underplays almost every scene so that when she does express an explosive burst of emotion, like an outpouring of grief after losing her sister, it hits even harder. 
Gladstone can convey a total shift in Molly's demeanour with a twinkle in her eye or a slight turn in the corner of her mouth. There are plenty of familiar faces in supporting roles. Jesse Plemons, John Lithgow, Brendan Fraser, Cam's dad from Modern Family, David the Cannibal from The Last of Us. But DiCaprio, De Niro and Gladstone are the holy trinity of this cast. The former two doing some of the best work of their careers, while the latter emerges as one of the breakout stars of 2023. When this money started coming, we should have known it came with something else. Scorsese's usual band of collaborators behind the camera are firing on all cylinders. The late great Robbie Robertson provides Marty with one last incredible score, building tension in every scene with the creeping melody of a thumping heartbeat. Editor Thelma Schoonmaker, who worked on Scorsese's first film and has edited all of his movies since Raging Bull, proves once again that she knows how to rein him in. There isn't a single scene that doesn't need to be there, and the film is briskly paced without ever feeling rushed. Cinematographer Rodrigo Prieto, who provided the pink-hued visuals of Barbie earlier this year, does a complete stylistic 180 with the bleak, washed-out, yet striking imagery of Killers of the Flower Moon. Prieto captures both intense close-ups of the actors and stunning western landscapes in glorious widescreen, and mixes in period photography to immerse you in the past. This is filmmaking at its absolute finest. You've got to take back control of your home. As is usually the case with Scorsese's crime epics, Killers of the Flower Moon starts to slow down towards the end as the criminal empire comes crumbling down and everyone faces the devastating consequences of their actions. But it's still engaging right up to the end credits because it's such an unbelievable story full of unpredictable twists and turns. Killers of the Flower Moon justifies its epic runtime with an equally epic narrative. It's sure to walk away with a handful of Academy Awards, especially in the acting categories. It has spectacular cinematography and music, and it solidifies Scorsese's title as the world's greatest history teacher. Can you find the wolves in this picture? Thanks for watching guys, I hope you liked the video, remember to like and subscribe and click on the little bell, and also seize the day and call your mom and be kind to yourself.